So let me show you the basic model which refers to the table. So now I'm going to the property and I will show you the simple beam. And let's uh, repeat the same comment as on the previous exercise. Now I'm going to the translate. I will check the notes and I will I will copy these notes on the zeta direction with the value of 300 millimeters. Let me click on the preview. Okay, it's fine. So let's click on OK. And at this moment, we're supposed to click on the property. And from the dialog box, I'm choosing the 1D. And from this card, we have an access to the cable property. So in in my model, I will create a cable element with. Welcome to Go to Webinar. Webinar is made easy. I think we have some problem again. So is it okay? Is it sound back? Hello? Okay. Okay, it's back. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, okay. very sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So let me start again. So in this. In the dialog box, we have an access to the cable property, so it's obvious that we have to uh, have to check the material. So the another option is to specify the cross-sectional area. So I'm entering uh, this value, this equivalent to uh, five millimeter of the diameter. And under the cable behavior, we have to check this box. Let's enter the value for the cable element. In this case, it it can be like 1,300 gigapascals, and let's click on this redistribute internal force, for example. So let me change the name, for example, 5 millimeter diameter cable, and I'm clicking OK. So I just created this this property, and from the menu, which is uh, placed here in under element, I am clicking again on this create. And from this this tab, I will connect the nodes. So I'm clicking this node and this node. I'm using the right property. And once again, I will change the direction for the cable. I'm clicking OK. Yeah, this is fine. So let's click on Apply. The same for the second cable element, and the same for the third one. Okay, so let's click on this button. And at this moment, I'm going to uh, to constrain the model. So I'm clicking on this load and boundary conditions tab. Let's assign the constraints. So I will use the predefined definition. So I'm selecting the top nodes and I'm clicking on the fill button and the second step is to specify the load and in my example I will create two load sets so let's create uh, the first load set and let's use the force. The force will be applied at the middle node on our beam so I'm selecting this and the value will be equal to minus 50,000 newton on the zeta direction. This is load set number one, which will be valid for the third subcase. So let's apply. And we will generate exactly the same value for the second load set. But actually, we can use the same load set even for the, even for the second subcase. So let me change this little bit to 40,000. <laughs> okay, there is no select object, so once again we have to click on the middle node. Okay, we have it, and at this moment I'm clicking on the analysis and results, and I'm going to, to create analysis case for the nonlinear static. And one more time, I will say uh, that cable element is a nonlinear element, that's why we are doing this 
nonlinear calculation. So let me edit the analysis case. All of the meshes has been provided. So right now I'm moving this mesh to the non-active dialog window, let's say. And I'm going to set up the subcases. So I'm clicking the subcase control button. We have to check this geometry nonlinear. As the number of the increments, we can use 50. And we can click on OK. I will create additional subcase. And for the second subcase, we will use uh, this default number of increments. And this checkbox uh, should be also checked. So clicking on that. And on the static load for the second subcase, I'm activating the second load set. And boundary condition will be the same. OK, so we prepared the nonlinear static analysis. So I'm clicking OK. Let's calculate the model. OK. Let's display the results. So I'm clicking on this multi-step animation and we will play the animation. I think the formation is so uh, small and I think it, it could be better when we will display the when we'll display the uh, output vector for the cable elements. So at this moment I'm going to click the insert analysis results and we will import the cable element forces for example. So I'm checking the cable force the axial direction of my results, so I will click on OK. Let's display this this output vector. So as you see, now we can investigate the forces uh, on other cable elements. So please take a look on the on the element at, at the middle. So now our forces is increasing, and until the value of 25,000, it should be broken. So I'm showing this situation. So if you go back, the breaking force for for this cable element is around 25,500. So according to the increment size, we see this value, which is very close to 25,500 at this moment. So now we see that cable element has been, uh, let's say, broken, and the structure uh, is just is uh, re re resisting this force without the, the middle cable. Okay, so this was the first example with the cable. The second interesting thing refers to the pretension, and at this time I will skip the PPT and we will back to the presentation uh, after uh, after example uh, after this example uh, presentation. So now I'm clicking on the next model, which is exactly the same as previous. And one of the major improvements of new NFX 2014 is the pretension. Pretension which can be defined um, in two ways. So first way refers to the pretension as the load, which can be added to current subcase. And the second pretension refers to the uh, initial state of your, uh, of your model. So at this moment, I will use the pretension which refers to the command which is called initial force and stress. So this option allows to provide some initial condition for following element types like, like road cables, bars, uh, solids, and uh, planes as well, and plates as well. So I'm selecting the cable, and let's add the pretension for this middle uh, element. So now I'm providing the value 
value will be equal to 100 1500 newtons and if you want to use other other methods to assign this pretension you can um, select in this you can choose this from the unstrained length and unstrained length ratios these are additional options which uh, will be helpful to, to provide the pretension so I at this moment I'm just using the, the simplest way let's say and let's change the name to the load set pretension pretension and let's click on OK let me check one thing. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to edit the case which has been uh, prepared previously. And to add this pretension, we we are not let's say drag and drop this into subcase setting. The thing that you have to do is to click on the uh, on the subcase control, excuse me, on the analysis control, and from the initial condition, you're supposed to select the right load set. So I'm selecting this pretension load set, and I'm clicking on OK. OK, and we can calculate the mod. Let's display the results. So I'm expecting that the course should act on my uh, beam at the first increment. So to do that, I will insert the cable course result. And I'm clicking on OK. So let's let display. So as you see, pretension has been added as the, as the feature which is related to the state of your of your model. So the value is exactly the same and of course we can investigate uh, what will happen next with, with our model. So if we use this slider you see that the process will be will increased. Okay, another example refers to the hook and now I will go I will display the model so we have the same beam, but the only difference is that at this moment this beam has been connected via the cable with this hinge. Uh, and let me uh, display the the, pro the property for the cable. So I'm clicking on the edit, and this time let's check this hook length. What is the hook length? Um, this this is option uh, which uh, is related to the uh, distance and uh, and it will be used in the following situation so if a displacement takes place uh, beyond the hook distance the element will start to resist of the structure so let's enter the value actually maybe before we do this let me display the, the results for the case when we have no hook option activated. So now I'm clicking on this total translation and let's let's see of the model and for its deformation. I will change the scale. So in that case there is no hook left. So model is responding directly with this cable. Okay? Let's go back to the model and let's add this hook. For example, 2 millimeters. And okay. It can be 2 millimeters and let's recalculate the model. And now we can observe even from the interactive graph how the response looks like. So we have some proportional region here. And the analysis will take 
10, 10 seconds long, so we can wait. Now we see that the cable broke. So let me display the results. So we have cable with hook. So let's display the results and the animation in that case. And I will use, of course, the real deformation. We can use the probe for the better view 